Yes, hello, uh, Henry Gustafsson is my name. Uh, I uh, come from Alstom, uh, big railway systems uh, and the uh, vehicle supplier and uh, in this global co cooperation. And I've done this work together with my supervisors at Manadora University, Jon Paulsen and Eddie uh, Neubel. And uh, the basic of this is that uh, I'm uh, looking very much in studying in, in uh, requirements and architecture uh, processes. Uh, for system engineering and uh, software engineering and product line engineering. So the problem domain is uh, is where I'm very much interested in. And in this context, we've done, uh, we've done this work. Before. So the challenge, uh, <clears throat> uh, model-based system engineering obviously has uh, very many attractive features and very appealing for uh, organization to use. Uh, so, um, it's uh, very challenging to adopt it and to make it successful. And our aim here in the study has been to, to um, study previous adoption cases to understand what makes adoption successful or what makes it fail. And we, uh, we are uh, looking into uh, we are looking to this study to, uh, as a hypothesis uh, generator, to find uh, good uh, ideas for future studies. So the research questions are obviously the, the big interesting ones. Uh, what factors promote successful adoption what, in MBSC? What factors impede successful adoption in MBSC? And uh, to do this, we have a uh, in the study, we have interviewed people, uh, interviewed uh, a number of um, uh, people who have been in MBSC adoptions. And uh, to answer these questions, we realized we need to take them through a uh, chain, thought chain process. That was our idea. And uh, so we need to understand what their successes and failures are, obviously, so they can analyze the process of them to answer these questions. And successes and failures are obviously, as we know, uh, subjective. So what is uh, success to one organization or one individual might be a failure to another one. So it's very depending on your on your own bar. Where, where is your bar? What do you want to achieve? And this, this also was with us in the interview. So we started with uh, finding out the prior reasons and targets uh, in their MBSA adoption to make them follow this thought chain uh, until we come to the um, the really interesting stuff. And our main findings were five from this uh, work, and uh, we'll go into those a little bit later. And they're very much, uh, I can say, the main findings here are very much related to learning and, uh, and, and training and teaching. So, um, uh, in this style, I should say. So, um, that's uh, why I was listening very carefully on the keynote we just did. Person theory about the uh, background about the adoption, uh, the process itself, it consists of four phases. Uh, you start with an assessment of where you are in the organization uh, as compared to MBSC. And uh, this is a crucial step, obviously, because you know you know your gap, and so you can plan for filling that gap. So you do uh, next step phase is to do the planning. You are not based on the gap that you found in the assessment. Uh, the plan uh, then, of course, sets the scene for the whole rest of the adoption, which is the actual uh, early adoption phase, where you do the learning, where you do the development, where you um, actually uh, uh, start also working on pilot projects to uh, fine-tune your resources and fine-tune your uh, your um, people and tools and everything, and cure quality management system in order to. Uh, as many times as you need in, in, in pilot projects to be able to um, uh, make them ready for success in the deployment of the business. And uh, these these four phases are, are all um, uh, quite uh, essential. You cannot skip one of them, of course, and uh, their, the success depends on the previous phase. Uh, so uh, uh, the quality in each phase is important. Yeah. The study itself, uh, we'll look at the context, the design method, and the uh, results, and some works about completion and then um, related works. So, uh, we uh, have done this study in the vehicular system, and uh, we've done, um, we, we have interviewed models, managers, and model users to get some diversity. We have uh, also interviewed, we, we also 
they have been involved in, in two other phases. So, uh, high looking area adoption and the projects. And the projects they have been working. The design itself uh, was set up uh, so we were seeking uh, expectations and experiences of, from various forests and adoption phases and uh, engineering branches. <coughs> and we uh, collected the data via semi structured interviews uh, with a final and time glass approach in combination. Uh, we analyzed the data by thematic analysis and we um, uh, and in the analysis, we made sure we eliminated the data from different perspectives to 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 um, make sure we found uh, some uh, to make the data more the, to make the results more. Uh, yeah, to make sure that we found uh, valuable data that we didn't miss any, any important concept in the data. And there's uh, twelve interviews with uh, representing three different roles. Uh, the uh, 12 interviews gave us uh, 11 hours of recorded data, and uh, that when transcribed, that amounted to about 109 pages of transcribed text, which we coded and, uh, and uh, the thematic analysis. And we uh, did uh, altogether the experiences that collected were from five different cases of adoption. And an interesting observation is also that 50% of the interviewees have the experiences from more than one role in adoption. So that was a quite uh, nice uh, uh, fact that we observed that uh, we think made it made it um, uh, made it uh, interesting because that shows that they have uh, different glasses on in the adoption, and it's it's uh, perhaps not biased from one role or so. So that that was uh, something that. Happened. Uh, results. Uh, first question then, uh, what are the primary first purposes and targets in BSC adoption? And here we could group the uh, uh, group data into two main groups. Uh, one was to manage uh, complex engineering tasks better. And here we also include like taking care of big activities, large activities. So we interface management, internal and external interface was uh, given to provide awareness in example, simulation of requirements to be able to verify requirements better than just by statically reviewing them. Um, uh, we also had um, here uh, uh, testing was also a large uh, piece of the uh, activity that, uh, that they proceed to have a big benefit. From. And uh, to achieve uh, more effective communication, collaboration was obviously a second uh, big group that we got uh, from, uh, 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 that we could sort in data from. And uh, here we, uh, you can say that most of this stemmed from the, uh, from the um, uh, fact that you had the one repository and the one uh, common language for the whole uh, team, and that was considered to be uh, a real um, the, the, the big uh, things that provide, would provide an effective communication and collaboration. Moving on to factors that promote success in MDS adop adoption. Here we also found two uh, groups where we can sort in data from the news. Uh, one of them um, is uh, activeness and engagement. And uh, this uh, had some different phases. Uh, it could be like a big support from company management, uh, very strong support from company management was perceived as a, as a success factor. Uh, uh, another um, factor or another um, uh, phase of this uh, activeness and engagement was so that uh, they, the team, uh, they applied a uh, various very uh, enthusiastic exploration and attitude when they were uh, doing the adoption. That was considered to be uh, also a good thing. And uh, <clears throat> there were also teams that had uh, people in the team who persevered. And when things were rough going in the adoption, uh, then uh, there was a, a clear a clear experience that 
if they had someone in the team that really was very strong and persevering and persistent, that would help the whole team to uh, to succeed and to um, conquer. So uh, these these are the most interesting um, or most um, some examples of this uh, of this particular group of people. Second uh, theme in this uh, question that we're sorting data was the access and the SX for knowledge. Um, and here, uh, they, the interviewees talk about both expert knowledge that experts that were in the team or outside the team that could lead the way for, for the um, uh, for the team to set uh, trade for the process trade uh, set up uh, tools, uh, set up uh, everything and be uh, in mentor and some team or to guide everybody, provide teaching and so on. There are also another version of this uh, was, of course, to have an, a mentor for the team available at a distance, somebody who could easily call if they run into trouble or problems. Uh, then the uh, final uh, question. Uh, what factors impede success in MBS adoption? And uh, here we could sort data into one main theme, which is related to it's a mere reflection of what you saw in the previous one, of course. Uh, which um, this one is insufficient MBS in knowledge, but it has a different twist here and more more um, aspects to it. Uh, when it's, when when the people saw that uh, that uh, the adoption was impeded. Because uh, they could see that sometimes there was a knowledge gap among people who actually were in contact with the model, and uh, that uh, that that could uh, be, for example, uh, people in the team who, uh, when the adoption started and uh, the modeling complexity was was low, or the complexity of the of the theory was low. Uh, things went smooth, but at a certain point they reached a threshold in the uh, in the uh, where it went. They came into a little bit more complex concept in the language, in the modern language, like for instance the two kinds of flows in activity diagrams. It was actually brought up as an example, uh, and uh, and also when it, as when you uh, when when the engineers just did uh, uh, models with where you can see the uh, the blocks with the interfaces uh, that went okay, but uh, to open up the blocks uh, and give the internals and specify the internals of blocks, that's also that's, uh, an area where where engineers had uh, actually surprisingly uh, much trouble, according to one at least one observation in the in the study. So this this uh, and, and this uh, actually caused very big surprise because this manager could really not. At all understand why it would be so uh, challenging to overcome such these thresholds, and it was really a bit, um, um, a bit, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, yeah, could not find a way forward to bridge this gap. So much more, um, much more important than you can think, uh, and much more challenging than you can, than you can think. It could also be. Um, Model users expressed that they they were in the modeling tool and they also, uh, uh, to their own surprise, understood that they could not readily uh, use the modeling tool. They, they didn't have enough knowledge. They didn't really even know what to ask. Uh, so and they uh, and it was very complex and powerful. They understood that, but they didn't have the knowledge to use that power. Uh, then we come to another um, factor, another group of uh, data, which um, actually uh, is uh, to me a bit more interesting and, and more perhaps unexpected, and it's related to people who are not in contact with this model. Uh, this might not have so big influence, but you can say that these people, if they're not in, 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 in involved in the model, they shouldn't have that type of impact on the result of the whole adoption. But actually, they, our data shows that they, they do, actually. So people, then this, this involves managers, for instance. They don't come in contact with the model, but uh, they have a huge influence on the, on the outcome of the adoption. And in particular, uh, it, 
this expressed itself as uh, the, when the team, uh, when when the team of adopters, uh, the engineering teams, came to the managers with trouble and issues that they needed support with, then the the manager, uh, without the knowledge about MBSC, enough knowledge about it, could not really support them and uh, and help them solve resolve the issues. So that clearly impeded uh, the success uh, and. Um, and they had to work around it, especially when it was a stressful situation. Uh, and the second, the second uh, uh, way here, second part here, is people who uh, were around the team, they, they perhaps received secondary artifacts from the model, um, uh, like diagrams and so on, and other documents. And there was a tendency there to uh, equate the diagrams uh, with the actual model. And that was a, uh, like a huge gap in perception that was really difficult to overcome. So uh, when uh, when the, the people around the model team uh, saw the diagrams, they 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 were sort of showing reluctance. Uh, they couldn't understand why it doesn't take so long to, to draw a, a, such a simple diagram, and it's not even uh, like it, it doesn't really even. Uh, um, it could probably be done a lot better if in a in a more better drawing tool like a visio or, uh, or something like that and that was uh, that was very um, um that that really did it success also because they uh, they show resistance because of the uh, this failure failure to understand the process behind they were thinking mm -hmm. just conclusions please so it's time just conclusions yes yes conclusions i'm just there <laughs> So we have uh, we have looked at, uh, at the NBSC adoption uh, in vehicular systems, and we have found two reasons, two brutal reasons for uh, NBSC adoption. Uh, we have found two groups of uh, factors that promote certain adoption, and we found um, uh, you can say two subgroups, two groups that uh, uh, impede success in adoption. And uh, it's a small um, um, comparison with related work. It's obviously, obviously that you see comparison that would work like it's connected with, with the inputs of quality and quality. And you see also that there are related work that says we must consider stakeholders and we must provide training to the whole team and also to the stakeholders. But in this case, we uh, also say that okay, that it's not only a lesson learned that is a bit interesting. It's also it's quite se severe. It cannot see what you can actually work on. You know, teach uh, uh, um, people and stakeholders. So this is uh, this is the sort of our, uh, I think probably the sort of most interesting the knowledge part here for uh, for the team uh, or is the most um, interesting. Uh, a uh, path for the future work, and especially, and then if you do the rest, this would be also. So I think that's also a key, key observation in this uh, conference report. That uh, we need three, it's one phase, it's about knowledge, but it needs to be a work to So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, quick question. Uh, I was just thinking that maybe there will be another reason. In my opinion, it's important that the lack of tools or adequate tools to uh, implement MPC. And um, I have seen that from experience where I've seen the uh, AVL language, which is a nice modeling language. There are some tools, but in my opinion, they're not good industrial tools or address that a lot of tool. So, do you think that's a factor? Can we cover that in your study? Uh, yeah, no, uh, with, uh, these cases that we looked at, we were using general purpose languages. Uh, so, uh, yes, and um, and I haven't uh, looked into that, but I think you need to go down the route of, uh, I think a, a good way for this to use domain specific languages uh, to, to make the threshold easier for, uh, for engineers. And uh, so I think you probably need to configure uh, tools dedicated for a particular domain to, to Overcome it with knowledge specials. That's not my take on this side. One more question. Uh, many times in industry, when we propose a way to resolve some problem, 
in a model-based way or in a model-driven engineering way. They say uh, we have very short deadlines. Uh, we will not have enough power to prepare everything that's needed. And my question is, uh, when an organization is at an appropriate mature level for application of such principles, because many times they are lack of time and they are not uh, mature enough to, to apply those principles, because they need a lot of investments before they we can say it's payoff now. Yes, yes, you're quite right. right. Uh, I think that's also, well, that is actually, uh, then uh, we got that information in, from the interviewers also. Uh, and and uh, that that it was they did it under stress. It was uh, it, there was the manager said there was there, it's never enough time to do this. We're always in a limbo situation, but either we have time, uh, but we don't have uh, money, or we have money from the customer, but we don't have uh, time because it's stressful to uh, meet yeah. the customer. Yeah. So uh, that is that is a big challenge, and and I think that's probably also uh, uh, generic. Uh, but there are cases of, of successes in uh, in uh, this adoption, which uh, actually led to where they have been invested and come up with, with a with a return on investment. Maybe it's time to think about some maturity models or capability models, how to measure organizations and how to implement in organizations to be able for applications of some such principles. Yes, that would probably also be a very good uh, field of study. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Okay, some other questions? If not, thank you very much again. Yeah.